lot of animal sign down here in the creek bank. Got deer. Looks like coyote. Some more stuff down there. This one follows all the way. Really nice bobcat. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Well, I am out here doing an overnight and uh, haven't had time to film. I got out here later than what I wanted to and uh, I've just kind of been running around like a madman trying to get everything done before it gets dark. Um, I've got about an hour before it gets dark and uh, I was pushing it. So I was kind of <laughs> frantically doing stuff. I wanted to uh, make sure my bedding and all that was set up. I wanted to make sure that I had enough water to cook with tonight and to drink and uh, I wanted to make sure I had enough wood gathered that I could uh, use my stove and, and all that. So um, I'm just doing a, a, an overnight, just one night out here, uh, but it is supposed to get pretty cold um, for our area. The low is supposed to be like 39. So, and I know right now it's, uh, it's probably pushing 50. It's getting colder. It seems like every minute with that sun going down, but uh, I got everything done. Um, I just, I didn't, have time to set up a camera and film it all, so I apologize, but um, just kind of cooling off. I was getting worked up and uh, starting to sweat, and I didn't want to get my, my hoodie wet. I'm gonna be out here for a little while tomorrow. Um, I'm debating on whether or not to do uh, two nights. It just depends, I guess, on how, how well I sleep tonight um, and you know, kind of where my, my food situation is. I've got enough if I stretch it for two nights, but uh, for sure, I just wanted to, uh, to get out for tonight and get in the hammock when it gets down below 40 um, or gets you know down below the mid 40s and, uh, and, and test it out. So uh, I will move the camera around and show you a little bit of camp before it gets too dark. And then other than that, uh, I'll, I'll get you up in the morning with me and, uh, and, and go over some stuff and, and maybe do some fun stuff tomorrow. So uh, hang in there and I'm looking forward to a fun night. All right, so over here I've got my little uh, fire area. I'm not going to be building an actual fire. Um, I'm just going to be using my large fire box and I'll just keep it going. It actually puts off a good amount of heat, but I'm not looking at using a fire for heat tonight. Um, I brought plenty of uh, clothing for me. Um, and over here, I just kind of got stuff spread out. <laughs> I've got my kettle already full of clean water using my Sawyer filter and my bottle um, full of clean water using the Sawyer filter. And then the target bag um, I've got my frozen uh, steak and a frozen chicken breast for tomorrow for lunch. Uh, and then I've got a um, large zebra pot in this little bag that's got uh, some dried soup mixes that I'll be sharing with you tomorrow. Um, I'm going to test them out and see how they do, but pretty excited about it. I'm using my big Frost River pack just because I did bring a pretty big sleeping bag and also brought my... Uh, Boreal shirt that I tied to the bottom. So I needed a little bit bigger of a pack. I brought way too much stuff for just an overnight, but um, I've got some fun stuff planned. So I was, you know, willing to carry the extra weight. And the way I've got my tarp set up uh, is kind of just, I've got it rigged up. The wind is supposed to die down uh, by later tonight. It's supposed to get down to like maybe four miles an hour. So right now it is gusting a little bit, but. Uh, I've got my AquaQuest um, Safari tarp. It's uh, the the big one, the 13 by 10. And what I have is it tied off to um, a stick that I've got stuck in the ground, and I've got it tied off to a real heavy dead log. And I've got a fork stick here that I ran my line through and staked it down, and then. On the back side, I've just got it pulled down. So the reason why I have my tarp set up this way is because the wind is supposed to be coming in this way. So this is going to give me a good wind block um, to keep me somewhat warmer. All right, so under my tarp, I'm using my uh, Warbonnet Blackbird XLC. I've got a little ground pad down here below. And then... I've got a 30 degree marmot sleeping bag. 
a wool beanie, shemag, an extra pair of wool socks, some dry ones I'll put on when I get in the hammock. And then under here, I have, it's a little trick that I've used a couple of times now and it works out fine. So I've got my climate pad and what I do is I take my snug pack jungle blanket and put it down first and put the climate pad on top of it to add not only extra insulation but also to have something coming out from the sides of the pad uh, so that if I do happen to move around and roll over in the middle of the night I'm not just sleeping on the bare material of the hammock I've got that jungle blanket under me and I've noticed now this is probably my third time doing this um, that the blanket kind of helps hold the pad in one spot um it, it's not that it moves around a whole lot but it just it really adds to the warmth of it so i should be plenty fine in that if i do get cold i've got my wool boreal shirt over there and i can put my hoodie on my boreal shirt and my beanie um and normally if my upper body's warm then i'm normally fine i don't have i'm not the kind of person that gets really cold feet when i sleep tonight i'm going to be cooking up some broccoli uh, cheddar soup or potato broccoli cheddar soup and a steak that I will cook first and cut up and then cook my um, cheddar soup and then mix it all together. So not sure if I'm gonna be able to get that on camera. It's gonna get dark here uh, in about an hour, um, maybe a little bit less, but I will uh, show you in the morning the other soup mix and that way you can kind of check it out to see if you want to try it too so what the heck is going on all right so i've got the big zebra pot here and earlier I cooked this steak. I had to cut it in half because it wouldn't fit in there. And I used my pot grabbers and just treated this top section as like a, a skillet. And so I cooked those. Underneath this, I've got water boiling because I'm going to be making these, which are cheddar broccoli Idaho potatoes so wait where's the footage from camp the next morning where's the cooking stuff and Moore's coffee and all that stuff well to be honest with you I packed up that night um, this is a completely different day a much colder day than even that night was and yeah I packed up at around midnight and walked out and uh, was out of there by, by about 1 a.m. So what happened was my whole reason for doing that overnight was this was my first year that I had a double layer hammock um, in the cold months or when it was starting to get colder. So up until then, I'd only had uh, my Hennessy hammock that I had ended up selling to be able to afford the war bonnet and I have my JB's hammock. Both of those are single layers. And I haven't gotten an underquilt because we only get about maybe a month and a half, two months of weather that's under 50 degrees consistently. So me going and spending a hundred and something, 200 and something dollars for uh, an, an underquilt that'll work with my war bonnet and that will you know, be something that is a buy once, cry once kind of thing, it's just not uh, practical for me. So um, I wanted to do that overnight to try and see what it would be like just using my insulated pad, my climate pad, um, which I've put on the ground many times in much colder weather than what that was that night. I've used with a bivy and a sleeping bag and put all that, you know, the pad and the bag inside the bivy and stuff on the ground, toasty warm. So. Why not give it a shot? I've got a double layer hammock now. I can slide my pad in there and it won't move around. Well, it, it didn't move around. I just never got it angled right. Um, so before I actually got into the bed, like I had shown you, I'd put that snug pack blanket down 
and put the, the pad on top of that. And my thinking was if a little bit of my elbow or something hangs off the side of the pad, uh, at least there's going to be something there with that snug pack blanket uh, that'll add a little bit a little bit of insulation to it. So I got in the in the hammock at like 7:45, 8 o'clock, knocked out. I mean, I was tired, and it must have been around 11:30, 11:45. I heard crazy coon noises, probably them having intercourse. Uh, we've all heard that before, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, once you hear it, you you know what what I'm talking about. But um, and it woke me up and I realized my whole right arm, the whole right side of my arm, my shoulder, and then up here on my upper back was just bone freezing cold, like ice cold. I checked the temperature on my phone and saw that it was uh, right around 40, uh, 39 degrees. So I got up out of the hammock and moved stuff around and uh, put my my wool beanie on and moved around for a little while and I just couldn't warm up. And so um, I just called it a night. I had uh, I actually had a music show the next day where I was gonna be playing and singing for a little while. Um, and I didn't, I didn't wanna just get no sleep and wake up with a sore throat or just whatever, you know? So, um, I've got no shame in saying that I packed up and I didn't stay the night. It was a, it was a experiment. It was something that I was giving it a shot and I hadn't used that hammock before in colder weather and I learned from it. And now I know and I've talked to some friends on Facebook and different groups and I've got some suggestions as to what I can use to, uh, to help me get down to that, that temperature. And uh, so yeah, it was a lesson learned. But uh, I just wanted to give you a closure on it and let you know that that's what happened and uh, I still had a fun night and it was it it was beautiful out I just I didn't have the right equipment and I think that's something important to note is uh, regardless of what your skill is um, unless you're in a long-term situation where you're going to be remaking stuff or, uh, or crafting stuff and making a shelter with debris and all that as insulation um, when you're just going out for an overnight or just for the weekend, uh, if you're not properly equipped, it can cut that, that trip short really quick. And I, I know we all know that, but it was just a good refresher for me. So thank you for watching, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoy the little bit of footage that I did film. Um, I'm definitely planning on getting out. The weather's getting really good here now. This is my favorite time of the year, and uh, I will be putting out some more videos. So I appreciate everything you do for my channel. Uh, all the views and the comments and the likes and uh, stay tuned I'm going to give you a hint uh, I rolled over a thousand subs and I'm going to be doing a pretty cool giveaway a pretty big giveaway um, I'm just waiting for some final pieces to to complete it so uh, thanks for watching guys have a good one